Hey, welcome back to John's Films. Billy Rebecca reached out to me today. He's a creator you probably have seen out on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. He had a great question. I got a buddy. We want to start a film company. He's 700 miles away. How do we edit the same projects? What do we do? How does it work? Today we're going to look at it. I had to rebuild my server today anyway. So, hey, now that I've got it set up, let's go take a look at what we need to do in the system to get it shared out on the internet. All right, let's look at our goal again. We got Billy, and Billy's got a buddy. I don't remember his name, but he's got a buddy that both want to edit and DaVinci Resolve at the same time. Now, some complicating factors. They don't live in the same city, so that's going to be difficult. So we're going to need two copies of DaVinci Resolve Studio. Next, a project server comes with DaVinci Resolve Studio that can host a Postgres database. And what that does is it stores all of your project settings, your media cuts, effects, color treatment, render settings, and all that special magic you put into your footage. Now, there's something I didn't say. Well, that's that the internet is in between them. You might have inferred that by the locations, but it really introduces some challenges. For one, if you were to put all the media, like all the clips, down on the Postgres server somewhere, you'd end up trying to edit across the internet. And when we buy faster storage for our computers so that it's faster to edit with, can you imagine editing across the internet? Painful. We need to give each of them a copy of the media files. So if one of them goes off and shoots a wedding or another event, they need to get the files to the other so that they can edit with them on their local machine as well. This is what P2P would be fantastic for, or you could zip encrypt and upload to a large file share website. If you're really good, you'd probably set up remote robocopies or backups that every night would pull down whatever the latest was, and then you'd be able to start editing when you wake up after somebody shoots an, an event the night before. However, let's say that we get that problem solved, because it's really not the worst one. Now what we've got is both of them with the footage, and we end up with the project server that we need to put somewhere. Could go hire an external host and install the project server there, but it makes sense to put it in one of your houses. Initially, you might start trying this by configuring off your exact DaVinci Resolve workstation. So what we'll do is we will move this over behind Billy's firewall and into Billy's house. And what's a firewall? Well, it's a traffic cop that sits between your internal network here at home and the internet as a whole. Now, Billy is going to be happy. This is going to be working great for him. Everything's fantastic because DaVinci Resolve will connect to the project server. It will read all of the metadata about the project. He will use his local media files and he'll be able to edit. However, Buddy over there, he is going to try and figure out how to connect to the project server, but he won't be able to get past the firewall. So Billy will need to open a port, 5432. This is the port Postgres SUL uses for data access. And it's the same thing that's going to be needed so that DaVinci Resolve can communicate with the Postgres SQL database back at Billy's house. So this creates a to-do list for Billy. First thing we need to do is install project server. The second thing, create a server instance, like in the video I show above. The third thing is going to be to create a firewall rule to open a port and route it to the server. We'll show that in a minute. The fourth thing would be to configure dynamic DNS if Billy doesn't have a static IP at his house. What does that mean? Well, everybody gets a phone number on the internet. It's called an IP address. The problem, though, is unlike your phone number, the IP address can change at any given time. So you have to plan ahead if you want to make sure that Buddy can still dial up Billy's phone number or IP address and connect to it. So there's some dynamic DNS services that make that easy. Finally, Billy will share the connection details with Buddy, and it'll be up to Buddy to configure it following my previously mentioned video. Except this time, because we're hosting this on the internet, we need to change the user and password that are attached to the database. To do that, what we'll do is launch the PG admin tool. This is available from the start menu. Just hit the start button and then search for PG admin. It'll pop up and it'll ask you to log into your database here. To open it up and log in, all you need to do is put in your DaVinci Resolve user and password. So that would be username. Postgres, all lowercase, that's P-O-S-T-G-R-E-S, -E and your password, which is DaVinci, with a capitalized D and a capitalized V. Once you're connected, it'll show you all of your database objects. 
Your database objects will include these login roles, which you need to create a new one. You need to create a new one or change the password on your existing one. I'm going to create a new login role so that we don't mess anything up. I will now create new login role I'm in here. The things you need to change, put in a login role name and go to role privileges, click super user, go to definition. And here you will create a password. This needs to be complex and something that people aren't going to be able to easily scan and enter on the internet because you are going to be opening this database up to the internet. Once you have your Resolve user created, you'll come back into your project server dashboard. And this is where you'll create a new database. And this new database, you will use your new username and password. And the name of the database is what you'll put here. This will create the database for you in the back end. Now that you have those details, you want to enable sharing by clicking up here. This will run a script out of the project server to access your host-based authentication controls configuration file and allow access from the network explicitly to the database. Finally, create an access key in the top right-hand corner. This, this access key is going to make it easy to connect your DaVinci Resolve projects back on your regular workstation to the project server. In this case, you would drag and drop the access key here into the left-hand panel or just use new database, providing the database name, the server location, and the username and password you use during setup. Once we've got that done, we'll have the database attached on the local network, and we're ready for the next step. That's to open this up for Buddy to be able to access it from the internet. To do that, we have to open a port on the router. Now, routers are specific in their network access configuration. Each router, each brand is going to have a different firewall access, but they all have the same general idea. You need to open up a port forwarding address through your firewall. This really says, hey, look, if I get anything from, in my case, my open internet WAN on the TCP protocol, which is what the database will use, for, and I'm going to use a port, which is 5432, I'd like to push it to 192.168.1.185, which is my local server. And the port that I'm going to send it to is 5432. This I'm going to label as my Postgres database. And now I can click Save. That has created a rule so that anything that comes in through my external network on that port will get sent directly to that server. And the server will expose the database to the internet through this port. It's possible that you'll need to change the host-based authentication configuration file to allow external network access. You do that by coming into the tools of your PG admin, going to server configuration and PG HBA, and changing the allowed addresses here that have access to these database objects. In fact, if you wanted to, you could very explicitly put Buddy's IP address in there and then somebody would have to replicate Buddy's IP if they wanted to access this database. That would be a lot better than allowing access from all IP addresses to this database. One of the things I found while looking into this, and Billy had mentioned to me he wanted to host this on a NAS, it's possible. Uh, you won't get to pick your hardware, but the maintenance and management of it might be a little bit easier. So you'd be able to go out and find a NAS drive. This TS-451 looks pretty awesome. Here from QNAP, I even found a how to install the DaVinci Resolve database tutorial here on QNAP's website that you'd be able to use. This would allow you to manage, and it looks like this one's even got a media, media server on it. It does a lot of the similar stuff mine does. If you go this route, one of the things you should be aware of is the system specifications. You can see this is just a simple quad core, I'm going to bet Celeron server with two gigabytes of RAM. That's going to be a little bit limiting if you really get cranking on this database. However, I, I really doubt with two users you would bring that much pain. This one here looks like a pretty good solution. It can run a multiple, uh, it can run VMs, so you could launch a Linux based server here, uh, just an instance of Ubuntu, really not even a server class OS. Put a Postgres database on that if you wanted, or it has a way to run containers for Postgres database that you'd be able to create and then attach to. Really, this looks like a great solution. 
would come down to how much you want to mess with building a computer versus <clears throat> how much you might want to be limited in the future by any commercial offering like this. All right, that's long enough. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned something about how to set DaVinci Resolve up across the internet. Uh, Billy, thanks for the idea. Thanks for watching the channel and uh, thrilled to be able to collaborate with you. To everybody else, please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Welcome back to John's Films. Today's tutorial will be taught by Lexi. Lexi, you gonna build a server? No, no, no server built.